last and final prophet of Allah. He was a mercy unto the universe. Peace and blessings be on Al Mustafa. So he began. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you and welcome to Hadith Principles. We are examining the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, learning about its importance to us in Islam and the great scholarly effort that generations of our Muslim leaders have applied to protecting the hadith and its sources from any interference or interpolation or distortion so that no one could add or subtract or alter anything of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Joining with us here in the studio today, we have our guests. We have Brother Ayman from the United States and Brother Muhammad and Brother Hussam from Egypt. Welcome. Glad to have you guys here, inshallah. This will be useful and beneficial for all of us, inshallah. We've been talking about the scholarly efforts of our ulama in examining the hadith and critically, carefully, accurately determining their authenticity. And we talked about that the hadith has two parts. The isnad or sanad, which is the chain of narrators. It's the family tree of this, or you could say pedigree of this hadith. And the second part, is the mutton or the actual text, the meaning of that hadith that is carried. So the mutton is the information we need to know, and the isnad is like the credentials of how we know that this is authentic and it's coming from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him. So we should treat that as a source, our faith and understanding. So the ulama didn't just look at these chains, these people, and accept them, but they looked critically to know who they were, whether they actually met each other, and whether they went back all the way to the Prophet Muhammad, through a companion, through the next generation, the Tabi'een, and that each person in that level actually knew and narrated hadith from the person above him, going all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. There's another thing they need to do. Even if those hadith are mutasal, musnad, they are in a complete chain, or the family tree is complete in every level, going back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. They also, in order to increase our confidence in the hadith, they study all the different isnads of that same hadith, the same matin, that has the same meaning or approximately the same meaning, talking about that same subject, and they look to see how many people are narrating those hadith to us? And so if they find that many Sahaba narrated that same hadith, and many Tabi'een, many of the second generation learned that hadith from the Sahaba, and that in every level there are many, many different people, that increases our confidence in this hadith that it's impossible, it's not physically possible, that all of those people who actually were scattered all over the world, and in fact, to journey from one part of the world to the other, even from, say, Medina or Mecca to Damascus or Baghdad or Egypt was a long, hard journey. It would be impossible that those people would have all gathered together and say, let's forge this hadith and let's make it up. And then they would have all agreed about its wording and its meaning, and then they would have foisted this lie upon the masses in the Islamic world. And so I may meet a very honest person and I trust him and he tells me something. But then if 10 other people come and tell me the exact same thing, I'm going to be really sure that's true. And so if one person tells me something strange, I might have a doubt. But when many people tell me something I didn't know, I'm going to be very confident. And so we call that Hadith Mutawatir. So Hadith Mutawatir is the Hadith in which there are many narrations on every level going back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Now, in fact, Mutawatir hadith are considered by the scholars of fiqh 
the scholars of Islamic jurisprudence to be the sources of qat'i knowledge. That is, it's absolutely certain and indisputable. And so that is considered by the majority of scholars to be a source of the major principles and practices, beliefs of Islam, that those are indisputable hadiths. And so they are a foundation for our Islamic knowledge. And so when we hear basic hadith narrated by Tawatur, which is the narration of these hadiths by many different people on every level, we can't really question their authenticity in any way. And so our basic Islamic practices, our basic beliefs in Allah and the angels and the Day of Judgment and the description of heaven and hell, the prophets and their scriptures, and our basic practices, the five daily prayers, fasting the month of Ramadan, zakat, pilgrimage, the recitation of the Quran, all of those we know verbally, matawatir, in every level, going back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Some of these hadiths been narrated by so many people that it is without doubt they are authentic. For example, the hadith, whoever invents a lie and attributes it to me, the Prophet is saying, whoever lies about me intentionally shall prepare his seat in hellfire. That hadith was narrated by 62 companions of the Prophet Muhammad, each one of them to many different students going all the way down. Many of the other hadiths about meeting the Prophet at the Hawd, at the basin in paradise, that we will meet the Prophet ﷺ, inshallah, if we're included among them, of the true believers. The first place we'll meet him is at the basin of water in paradise. That we raise the hands in the different positions in prayer, at the beginning of the prayer, but also in rising from the bowing, the rukur, and other parts of the prayer that you can make in wudu, if you wash your feet, then you put on your socks or boots, something that's covering your ankles, and then throughout the day and night for 24 hours if you're at home, or 72 hours if you're traveling, you can only wipe upon them instead of taking those socks or boots off and then washing your feet. So that is also mutawatir is narrated by many, many, many companions and in, to every generation that the Qur'an was revealed to us in Saba Ahra, in seven different modes of recitation from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And every intoxicant, everything that conceals your memory and makes your judgment and interferes with your mind so that you cannot think clearly, every intoxicant is khamar or is the wine that is forbidden in the Qur'an. All of those are mutawatir hadiths. Other hadiths that are not on that same level are called generally by the ulama or the scholars of Islam khabar al-ahad. That is hadiths that are narrated by one or a few people in at least some levels in the chain of narration. That doesn't mean those hadiths are not authentic. They're hadiths narrated by trustworthy, reliable scholars. And so most of the Sahih Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim and the other sources are not mutawatir. But those Hadith are generally relating to the detailed, secondary level of knowledge of details of our beliefs and the details of our practices in Islam, not the foundation. So our basic beliefs, our Qana Iman, and other major Islamic teachings are known by very, very wide sources. A hadith that is less than that is called ahad. And the majority of scholars accept those hadiths, and they are authentic. And so the hadiths that are mutafaqun alayh, the highest level of authenticity, the majority of those hadiths are ahad hadith. And so in Islam, we accept them. If one sahabi came to you, are you going to say no? Of course not. And there's a proof from the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. In the Qur'an, in chapter 2 of the Qur'an, Allah changes the qibla, the direction of prayer. And so he tells us to turn away 
the Sahaba were praying toward Jerusalem, and he said, turn to the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca in prayer. And that happened while some companions were praying in some of the mosques near Medina, such as Masjid Quba. Sahabi came to them, to the door, and said, the Prophet Muhammad has received revelation to pray toward Mecca. And so immediately, they were praying in the midst of prayer, of the Asr prayer, the mid-afternoon prayer, and they turned completely around from Jerusalem, turned all the way around 180 degrees to pray toward Mecca. They didn't say, oh, bring more Sahaba, we don't believe you. And so we believe one Sahabi. And then among the Tabi'een, there are righteous Muslims who are honest and trustworthy, and we believe them. And we believe a Muslim brother who is known to us to be faithful, is not known to lie, and is trustworthy. And so most of us learn basic beliefs and practice of Islam. Maybe we had one teacher, or we had a few teachers, and they told us. And so we accept those hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad that are ahad hadiths, inshallah. We're going to go for a break, and we'll be back shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings be on Mustafa. In every job that you do, you want to be the best that you can be. To be the best that you can be, you have to follow the example of the best that ever were. When it comes to da'wah, there is no better example than the example of those men whom Allah chose to do the best of jobs. His noble prophets and messengers. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we study together the methodology of the Prophet in Dawa. Rush to adopt the matchless qualities that make the procedure of Dawa extremely effective in the methodology of the prophets in Dawa tonight at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. India on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Uthman Barry. My name is Ahmed Nasser. My name is Zaid Adib Ansari. My name is Tariq Khalid. Alive before the Islam, we were Christian. From falsehood to truth. The reason that I accept Islam was I was looking for the truth. What's the meaning of life? These answers I didn't find uh, in uh, Christianity. From unfairness to justice. The Muslims had a solution to these problems, but through their understanding of the Quran. My uh, life before Islam was typically an American life looking for purpose in life. From chaos to peace. Peace TV is playing a very important role in promoting Islam. Meet the people who have given up their ill fates to come out from the clutches of complete darkness in Darkness to Light. Every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 4 a.m. India on Peace TV. Peace and blessings be on Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Hadith Principles. We're talking about the way that the scholars of hadith examine the chains of narrators. And one thing is they look for how many narrators are bringing us this hadith. And when we find large numbers of narrators on every level, we're very confident of the authenticity of that hadith, and it's called mutawatir, and it's considered indisputably correct source of basic teachings, practices, and beliefs of Islam. But any authentic hadith, even if it is not on the level, if it's ahad, it's not on the level of tawatir, but it is authentic, continuous, 
going back to the Prophet Muhammad, is acceptable for us in our beliefs and in our practices of Islam. But normally those hadiths are dealing with the details, not with the very basic beliefs and very basic practices that we know as Muslims. So they are complementary and add to our depth of knowledge, but they aren't normally the foundation of our Islamic beliefs and practices. And so there are very many mutawatir hadiths, but they are the minority. Most hadiths are not on that level. Some things, they came from many sahaba in different hadiths in meaning, but not in the actual words. So we call that tawatir bil mana, that its meaning is very widespread. It's continuous and widespread at every level, but they're not exactly the same hadiths, but the basic meaning of those hadiths all is in agreement. So for example, we have the hadith about the end times, the coming of the Jal, the Antichrist, the coming of Jesus Christ, the coming of the righteous Imam or well-guided Imam who is a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the end of time and will be a just ruler. Those are mutawatir in their meaning. There's so many hadiths, but the details of those hadiths, there are many details which are not in that level. So one hadith gives you one detail, and so it may not be on that highest level. But when you put them all together, you get the basic meaning of what is going to happen in the Day of Judgment. Also, for example, the punishment in the grave. Some people think that, well, it's not fair. Why would Allah punish somebody in the grave? And the fact is the Prophet told us, and so many hadiths tell us that we will be punished in the grave for sins that we committed, and we did not make up for those sins or make toba nasuh, sincere repentance, for those sins in our lifetime, and so Allah may torment the person in the grave. Also, the shafa of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, in the Day of Judgment, he will have the shafa on behalf of all human beings, that to end the day, and the great day of judgment is so long and horrible for people, and they're so full of fear, and they beg the Prophet to intercede on behalf of the whole world, and for his ummah, his followers, to intercede for the sinful people on his followers that they will enter paradise and they will all enter paradise with the Prophet. Peace and blessing be upon him. All of those are narrated in widespread, very many different sources so that you can't dispute that those are basic beliefs of Islam, inshallah. Uh, can you please review of what we learned today? Yeah, well, let's talk about that again very shortly. It's not always, we don't always have to write these, but these words are foreign to people, and so we do need to write them sometimes. Mutawatir means what? Many narrations. Many on every level. So here's the prophet, many companions, many students. How many? Different scholars say many things. So from the companions, it doesn't have to be so many, because the companions are all assumed to be truthful and honest and righteous. But some people say five, some people say you know, bigger numbers. And each level of this hadith, we find many, many narrations. So that is considered hadith mutawatir. So it's called a tawatur. Tawatur. Tawatur is this characteristic of being continuous chains which are numerous. Multiple chains in every level. If it's broken at some level and it, there are Fewer, like only one narration of a hadith. If there's only one, it's called gharib, kind of a strange. It's called, you know, strange. But it doesn't mean it's not authentic. But if there's other hadiths that carry similar meaning, of course, it will be considered authentic. But when there's only one person, it's considered gharib. And if it's only, say, like two, you know, few people, it's considered aziz, a kind of a dear hadith, a kind of rare hadith inshallah but the majority of hadith also i forgot to write that the majority of hadith we have they're authentic but they're not mutawatir they are called ahad and our scholars of belief aqidah and scholars of fiqh jurisprudence accept ahad hadith that means authentic hadiths even though it's narrated by only one companion or a few companions and a few of the next generation it's no requirement in islam that everybody narrated every single hadith. But some companions narrated certain hadiths. They didn't narrate others. It didn't mean that they weren't authentic hadiths. Okay, uh, now for a daif hadith, can there be mutawatir? That's very interesting. 
actually they're considered sometimes they're widespread in the later generation. So it's not tawatr because it has to be in everyone. Of course, the companions never would narrate a weak hadith. And so if the weakness has to come later than the companion. And so the weakness in the hadith comes from certain individuals. So they're never tawatr. But what happens is they become widespread in later times. And so later times, everybody is narrating these hadith that are weak or fabricated, and they're very popular on the al-sana, 